All right, family, SC Johnson, Daily Kingdom Vitamin. It's been a little minute, but I've been getting emails and text messages, etc. people asking me where the vitamins are, so here we are today. But I want to talk to you quickly about uh, <clears throat> not being deceived, right? Pulling back from the masses. Whenever you see masses of mountain people, the sheeple moving in the same direction, be sure that that's deception, right? Moving with the crowd. The God that we serve, according to Chronicles 6 and 1, 2 Chronicles 6 and 1, then says Solomon, the Lord has said he will dwell in thick darkness. When you look in Exodus 20, 21, Moses having given the commandments, the children of Israel sta standing around, fearful because of the voice of the Lord was thundering. The Bible said they stood afar off, but Moses drew near into the thick darkness where Elohim or where God was. So the Bible says that God is light and in him dwelleth no darkness at all. In him dwelleth no darkness at all, that he is light. The absence of light is the definition of darkness. What is darkness? The absence of light. So if God is light, how can light go into darkness and darkness remains light? How could God dwell in not just darkness, but thick darkness? Well, let me explain something to you. We've got to be very careful because what you're seeing with Kanye West, what you're seeing with this ecumenical movement, and they're using the muse, where we get the word music. The muse is one who moves the crowd, MC, the mic controller, he moves the crowd. The muse, the Pied Piper, music is universal and sound is tremendously powerful and being used. Satan is a muse or a musician. That's where people, we get amusement park, amuse, you know, amusement park, uh, entertainment to detain the will so that a spirit enters. And so what happens is, that's why I told you the church is, is being conformed into the the theatrically driven instead of theologically sound. So they don't want word, they don't want that that liberates, they want something that brings them into bondage. And now wrong is right and right is wrong. So sound doctrine now is error and error and erroneous teaching, apostasy and, 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 and heresies and false prophets are being embraced as the truth. It's called a reprobated mind being turned over to believe a lie as if it were the truth. And so things are being turned upside down. Romans 1, they failed to retain God in their knowledge, so they were turned over. And so what we're seeing now is that second... Thessalonians 2, the son of man, I mean, so, I'm sorry, the son of sin, that man of sin, the lawless one, the Bible said eventually he'll sit in the temple of God and show himself as God. Many are saying that that is the third temple that's currently being constructed in, in maybe early forms in uh, the Zionist land of Israel. But the Bible says, no, you're not. Your bodies is the temple of the living God. So isn't this man of sin, this, this, this spirit of the Antichrist, the lawless one that's coming up on the scene? Uh, it'll be a world leader that will institute the new world order, government leader that'll work with the false prophet called the Pope uh, in the Catholic Church. But what's happening is he's going to have his John the Baptists or his forerunners. You're going to see little Antichrist activity you're seeing it now working in men in the temple of god so all kanye west and these other people are are just uh satan sitting in the temple showing himself as god an idol an idol and let's just keep it real there's another christ and another gospel that paul warned the church about in uh corinthians 11 and 4 i believe and he's warning, if, even if an angel come and preach another Christ, another Jesus, another gospel, let him be accursed. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing people name the name of Jesus uh, and, and gather around so-called worship. But if you, if you have the, the gift of discerning of spirits and if you have the spirit of truth in you, then there's something that doesn't settle in your spirit. Don't let your mind talk your spirit out of being led by the spirit of truth. Go with the Holy Ghost. He will not be deceived. In this era, you got to be careful because this deception is so strong. 
it is so strong that Satan is transformed himself into an angel of light and he has ministers no marvel that is ministers they'll parade around as ministers of righteousness so we have to adhere to the Holy Spirit that's why it's very important we don't get caught up in all these different names we call them Abba daddy or Abba father right why because we are now sons see what manner of love has the father bestowed upon us that should we, be, we, we should be called the sons of God so the whole creation Romans 8 14 is waiting on the unfolding the revealing the manifestation of the sons of God who are the sons Romans 8 14 they that are led of the Spirit of God so what's happening now is he has us in holding pattern in reserve he has us hidden in obscurity in thick darkness he has us hidden like he had the prophets in the day of Elijah that even Elijah were unaware of why because as it gets darker and darker he will reveal us, lead us. What we're seeing in the church is a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. What is the power thereof? It's the power of the Holy Ghost. After you've received the Holy Ghost, you shall be endued with power. So these people have a ghost. They have spirits. It's just not holy. It's not holy. So holiness without no man shall see God. Why? God is holy. He moved upon the hearts of holy men by way of the Holy Ghost and gave us the Holy Writ or the Holy Scriptures. So why can't a holy God have holy children who actually uh, manifest his life in the earth? They don't want the law of God, so they're using grace. Yeah, but see, you have to understand the law of God is God's word and God is his word. And so we look at that in Romans, the seventh chapter. And if you spend time, read all of Psalm 119. It starts talking about uh, in one, one, 160, verse 160, how that his judgments, his judgments are, are endureth forever. And I believe uh, 189, his word is forever settled in the heaven. And 115, uh, um, it's a lamp unto our, our feet and a light unto our path. Lamp unto our feet, it shows us where we are. Lamp unto our path, a light unto our path. It shows us where we have to go. So in Romans 7, you know, you know what I'm saying? Thy law uh, 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 is, is holy. And the commandment is holy, just, and good. Well, in your Bible, nobody's holy but God. Nobody's just but God. Nobody's good. Jesus even said, why call me good? Ain't nobody good but the Father. And, and the Father's good. So when you say the commandment is holy, just, and good, you're talking about God. And so you're talking about the creator of all things, heaven and earth. So he is not separated from his word. In fact, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. John chapter one, verse one, verse 13, the word became flesh and we beheld his glory as the only begotten word uh, of God, full of grace and truth, grace and truth. And so what happens is grace is not, shall we continue in the sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So he told the woman in adultery, go, but sin no more right? You don't want a worse thing coming upon you. So what happens is this, grace now um, is, is not just uh, something on us to justify us committing premeditated sin. Grace now, it, 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 it's mercy upon us, but it's empowerment now for us actually to receive the Holy Spirit, right? Gift of God, so that now he could live his life through us. We don't even know how to pray as we ought, according to Romans the eighth chapter, but the, verse 26, but the spirit maketh intercession, right? According to the will of God on behalf of the saints, he knows the mind of God. And so what happens is grace isn't something that we could just live any kind of way and say grace covers it all, I'm going to heaven anyway, but grace has empowered us. He delivered us from the bondage of the law, right? In, in that trying to keep it and it being our saving uh, grace in that sense to now putting his spirit in us and writing his law upon our heart. David even said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, so we can't go against the word because the word is going against God, God himself, you see. And so what happens is grace in this dispens dispensation is uh, 
is that mercy from the Father, but that empowerment to also carry out his commandments. Watch, watch. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another that you cannot do the things that you would. Galatians 5. So the carnal mind is death. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. But see, we walk in the spirit that we're not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. So it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? To go against the law of God. Why? Because it will be going against God himself, right? And so when he speaks, that's what the Holy Ghost is. The empowerment, the unction, really, of the rima of the logos of the word. The logos is the written word, which is logical. And the rima is the revelation or the reveal word. So the spirit search of all things, yea, even the deep things that be of God. So these things are spiritually discerned. They're spiritually discerned. That's why we have to be led by the spirit of truth. He's the comforter, the keeper, the parakletos to come alongside one. He will lead and guide. So you will keep the law of God or keep God, right? If you're led by the Holy Ghost. So we're in a generation now where people are led by their emotions, by their appetites, by their intellect, by their intelligence. Satan knows that. He's the prince of the power of the air, according to Ephesians 2 and 2, airwaves. So he uses, look how trash m music is now. I mean, I grew up in the 70s, man. I mean, even then, even secular music then, it's, it talked about love, man. But now everything now, man, is just absolutely trash. It's agitating and aggravating. If you have the Holy Ghost, even this gospel, so-called gospel music, a lot of it is agitating and aggravating. The frequency is off. You could hear it. You could hear it if you're in the spirit realm. You could hear the intent and the heart of the singers. That most of this stuff is inspirational. It's building up the person instead of lifting up the name of Jesus. When we used to sing hymns and songs, you know, back in the, in the day, they were directed toward God. They lifted him up. David said, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And when your songs are God directed, lifting up Jesus, lift me up. If I be lifted from the earth, I'll draw all men. What's happening now is we're in, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend and all this inspirational stuff. That's fine. But we need to lift up the name of Jesus and he needs to be the object of our praise, our worship, our desire. We need, we need, we need to deny ourselves and, and um, well, self de deny ourselves, deny ourselves the pleasures of life, not self denial. We exist. I acknowledge my sin. I've sinned, you know, against the and the only. And so, take up my cross and follow Him. It's about Him. It's always now unto Him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, you know, the Bible says. Um, uh, to him be the glory and, 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 and power and majesty and honor unto him that's able to keep us uh, from falling, right? It, it, it really is about him. We have this earth, earthly, this treasure in earthly vessels that the ecstasy of the power may be of God and not of us. So to God be the glory. He gets all of the glory for the great things that he has done. Not just saying glory to God and then flesh on display glory to god and then we take credit so you're seeing people now are about to worship satan in flesh vessels just like they do false prophets and just like you've had forever preachers and people being worshiped by their followers but it's about to be magnified but i need to encourage the saints the true remnant saints hang in there and, and hold on and keep your head because moses drew near into the thick darkness where god was not darkness as sin but darkness as a place of isolation. All of the Israelites, about 2.5 million of them, stood afar off. And one man, Moses, went into darkness. And the Bible says, Exodus 20, 21, where God was. What am I saying to you? I'm saying he's got us hidden in obscurity. You feel lonely. You feel all by yourself. But that's where God is. That's where he chooses to dwell, right? And so the secret place of the Most High. And so as you see, what's happening is the crowd stood afar off. If you were observing that from a mountaintop and saw one man walking into a thick cloud, into thick darkness, and saw 2.5 million people standing afar off, you would surely say that one man is in error and those 2.5 million 
are the majority. Majority rules, they can't all be wrong. But in the case of Moses, he was walking with God and 2.5 million people stood afar off. Don't get caught up in crowds. Don't get caught up in the masses. Don't get caught up in everybody justifying and defending Kanye and any, anybody else who is up out here operating in another spirit. Understand this, the world loves its own. It's going to defend its own and marvel not if the world hates you. So remember, we're always the minority. Jesus told 500 to go to Jerusalem and tarry till the day of Pentecost was fully come. Only 120 went. Jesus only chose 12 disciples originally. One of them was a devil. Only Peter, James, and John uh, got exclusive revelation and continued as a, as, a, as a triplet with him on the Mount of Transfiguration in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when he raised Jairus' daughters, they were in his inner court, right? And so you have to understand, he's always used the majority. He didn't even choose Israel because they were vast in number or a great nation. Matter of fact, he brought them out of the dead womb of Sarah, out of a, a, a woman past the age of childbearing, told Abraham, I'm gonna count, count the stars. That's how I'm gonna make your seed. So God always takes something out of nothing. Why? To lift up his name. What's going on in your life is him getting the glory out of your life. Hang in there, hold on. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It's gonna get so dark that the anointing that we have that seems to be nothing now is going to shine brighter than it ever has before. Hang in there and hold on. I'm encouraged, I need you to be encouraged. But know this, that he's got us in a holding pattern, reserved for such a time as this. I love you, keep your head up, lift up your head. O ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God, Lord Almighty, strong in battle. Certainly his name is Jesus.